thank you for joining us today for another exclusive interview sponsored by Imovet. Help your horses reach their maximal potential with Imovet's line of natural homeopathic products. I'm your host today, Aurelian Drumian. Today, we are excited to have Brian Meehan, a prominent trainer with an illustrious career. Join us as we discuss the thrill of Royal Ascot, the journey of the talented Jayaribi, and the unique qualities that make him a standout contender for the GR2 King Edward Seven Stakes. We'll also explore memorable moments, training strategies, and plans for Jayaribi's future. Stay tuned for an engaging conversation filled with insights from one of the sport's leading figures. So Brian, great to have you here, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> so Marcus's wife says Royal Ascot is like the Kentucky Derby on steroids. What do you think about that? Um, well, the people at Epsom might not agree, um, but uh, <laughs> I've never been to the Kentucky Derby, but it is, uh, it is five days of uh you know high class racing lots of people from around the world you know people you know you meet people at ascot you only meet once once a year and uh like i say they come from all over the world to be there so it's 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 full on it's great fun um i guess for the for the for the professionals it's quite intense there's a lot of pressure put put, a, put ourselves under a lot of pressure because obviously it's the the key thing is to try and win uh to win a race at Royal Ascot or two. For sure. It seems like the event really to to be at. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you recall your first visit as a trainer to Royal Ascot? You know, what happened? Can you explain a little bit more about that? Um, well, I could probably recall that the first time I went there was when I was I used to work for Richard Hannon. I was his assistant for five or six years and that would probably be my first mem memory of Ascot which was very different then uh, you know the pre-parade ring was up at the top the parade ring was in a completely different place with lots of trees and uh, oh. it was a grass it was a grass parade ring um, you know most of the time you'd go in at Royal Ascot in the paddock you'd be sharing the paddock with the Queen Oh, uh, which of course is nothing unusual you know in, on the new facility um, but uh, and obviously it's the king now. Um, but yeah, no, I just stayed. It, it was always about the the atmosphere it created. It was a very kind of um, uh, it had a, so much sort of mystique to it, and how you to you know to get around. And I mean, it's a lot easier to get around now because you know obviously they rebuilt it. But in those days, the old grandstand, it was uh, it was intriguing how you'd be able to get from place to place. As quickly as possible, with uh, you know, if you were meeting people and then saddling horses as well, and going to the paddock and so on, you had to be, uh, you had to know all the shortcuts and all the routes around the old grandstand that you could get in and out. And Seemed continue. like a lot of fun back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was actually. It was it was great. I mean, it's still huge now. It's just uh, you know everything changes and it's it's different. But yeah, it was it was very you know it was a crazy place. It was fun. Was it still quite international, even back in? Oh the yeah, yeah. I mean, more so now. You know, the world is sure has become a very small place for for a race horse. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess there was probably it. You know, there would have been English, French, and Irish trained horses in those days. You know, and then I guess the Australians came, and now we have the Americans and some Japanese and so on. And yeah, no, it's it. Very intense, maybe not as as international then, apart from European countries. Sure, fair enough. Great. Yeah. How do you recall how you met with, you know, uh, Jeruby's owner, Iraj Parvizi, you know, Aka, the map punter? Uh, he was introduced to me by his agent at the time, Angie Sykes. She, uh, she called me up and said he had some horses and she thought that he and I would get on well and could I have them? Um, I was delighted, of course, to have them. Um, and uh, yeah, first time I met him, he's very, very straight, straightforward individual. Obviously, a very successful man. So, you know, straight talking. Okay. Um, and he, you know, he's become a good friend. Oh, great! <laughs> 
So yeah. do, you, do, do you meet outside of, you know, maybe those kind of events or? Pardon? Do, do you meet with him maybe outside of, you know, Royal Ascot or outside of big events like this? Uh, I don't I don't think he's ever been to Royal Ascot. He doesn't go racing that often. Okay. Um, I would occasionally meet him for lunch outside oh. of racing, but uh, occasionally at the races as well. Fair enough. That's great. Yeah. What qualities made you realize uh, JRB is perfect contender for the GR2 King Edward Seven Stakes? Well, first of all, he's also going to be entered in the Hampton Court, so he may run, he will run, but it'll be one or the other. Okay. Um, so, uh, well, you know, he won a one, one mile one listed race at Newmarket at the start of the season. He didn't handle uh, the Chester track last time, so uh, it's a very obvious. Very obvious next step for him. Fair enough. And what will make you decide which one will he, uh, you know, participate in? Um, I don't know for sure. I think we will stay in both races for as long as possible. Delay the decision as long as possible. Part of our business is is uh, having options for horses. Um, I suppose at this point in time, I'd probably prefer to stay at a mile and a quarter. But the mile and a half is a, an option as well in the end with the seventh. Definitely, definitely. Could you also tell us a little bit more about the journey you are taking uh, JRB on? You know, it could be in terms of training or maybe prep races or the races he's, you know, attempted so far. You mentioned a few um, or, you know, everything put together. Well, he's only run, uh, he's only run four times in his life. Okay. Um, so I think it's more about the future with him than it is in, in as to what we've done already. I mean, my idea is uh, is to take him on the international circuit, um, and I know that would please his owner as well. Um, he's a French bred, so he qualifies for French premiums, which is a significant increase in prize money if he was to win in France. Definitely. Um, but I do like the idea. Um of potentially taking him to the Breeders' Cup in the uh, beginning of November, you know, and then, you know, that can lead on to Japan, Hong Kong, Dubai, wow. so on. Yeah. So you're definitely interested in taking him, you know, international all around the world. If yeah. That suits him, yeah. 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 Okay. Really cool. <laughs> now let's Thank look you. at, uh, you know, everything beyond yeah. speed and stamina. Does JRB have a particular temperament or maybe a personality that really contributes to his success? Uh, well, I think he's got a big stride length. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he when he when he won at Newmarket, he measured over twenty five feet in stride length, uh, which was that was considerably less when he was at Chester. Uh, hence, you know, he didn't handle the track. Um, I think that's one of his great attributes, the fact that he's a horse that likes to be likes to just get balanced and likes to be able to use himself. Okay. How would you if you could describe him in three words, what would be the words you would use? Um enthusiastic, hmm. honest, and strong. Interesting, interesting choices. <laughs> Why so? Why so? You asked me for three words. I gave you three words. <laughs> he's enthusiastic. He's honest, and he's a big guess, strong I horse. Guess. That's about it. You know, right now, right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And um, beyond the rail meeting, obviously, what is your plan for him? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I think um, it will depend very much on how he gets on at the royal meeting, and then we'll see. Um, there is a, you know, possibility it would be. A, possibly be a bit soon to go to the Eclipse after all Ascot. We did it before and won the Eclipse. Um, but that was with a four-year-old. So we, I might may wait and see um, about York. We could give him a break, midsummer break, head for York, and then, you know, think about the autumn and the winter with him. Great, great. Well, a lot of going on for sure, hopefully. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Brian. That was great. That's an absolute pleasure. Anytime. <laughs> That's fantastic. I hope you have a very nice rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.